calling them ladies now instead of girls. They're so important to us. For years and years and years, they have been performing for us. And they're called the dynamic duo. <laughs> While you're doing this, they used to come to my house when they were little. They didn't have much here. So I have something special for them. It's because they light up the world. Sometimes they're a little witchy, but most of the time they're very lovely. So would you light up the world for us, girls? Oh, there. Or oh, just hold it up so everybody can see. You've lighted up the world, whether it's October or November or whenever, but volleyball season. They gave everything they had. And Coach, I don't have one for you, and I apologize, but you were the source. Bye. <laughs> anyway, girls, thank you for lighting up our lives. Because we've enjoyed it.
continue to watch over them and guide them and bless them. Bless each and every person who does service for us in our local communities, in our highest offices. Ask a blessing on the presidents and all those beneath him. We ask that you continue to watch and guide us to take care of us. Bless us in Jesus' name we pray. Who taught us how to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, and as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We're now going to hear from our youth choir. Thank you. 
uh, turn in your Bibles in the New Testament section. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 25, 1 through 15. Matthew 25, 1 through 13. If you're in the Pew Bibles at the back, it's page 31. Matthew 25, 1 through 13. Listen to the Word of God. This is the parable of the ten maidens. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be compared to ten maidens who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. But when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flask of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. But at midnight there was a cry, Behold the bridegroom! Come out to meet him. Then all those maidens rose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, Perhaps there will not be enough for us and for you. Go around to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast. And the door was shut. Afterwards, the other maidens came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour. You do not know the day nor the hour that the Son of Man will come back. So let us be prepared. Uh, please turn with me in your Old Testament to page 211. Page 211. It's the book of Joshua, chapter 24. We we'll read verses 1 through 3. And then we will skip to verses 14 through 25. Page 211 of the Pew Bibles. Now listen to the word of God. Then Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem and summoned the elders, the heads, the judges, and the officers of Israel. And they presented themselves before God. And Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Your fathers lived of old beyond the Euphrates, Terah, the father of Abraham and of Nahor, and they served other gods. Then I took your father Abraham from beyond the river and led him through all the land of Canaan and made his offspring many. Let's turn to page 212. And let's start at verse 14. And this is Joshua continuing to speak. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in faithfulness. Put away the little gods which your fathers served beyond the river and in Egypt and serve the Lord. And if you be unwilling to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve. Well, the little gods your father served in the region beyond the river, for the God, little gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For it is the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up from the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And who did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the way that we met, and among all the peoples through whom we passed. And the Lord drove out before us all the peoples, the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, 
for he is our God. But Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions or your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you, and having done you good, after having done you good. And the people said to Joshua, Nay, but we shall serve the Lord. Then Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves, that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. And they said, We are witnesses. He said, Then put away the foreign gods which are among you, and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. And the people said to Joshua, The Lord our God, we will serve, and his voice we will obey. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and made statutes and ordinances for them at Shechem. Then I want to concentrate on Joshua's and his statement was, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Today I offer you life's greatest choice. The greatest choice you will have to make in all of your life. And it's serving the Lord God Almighty. This year we've been going through the book of uh, Genesis. And we've been going through the first five books. And now we're in the book of Joshua. A few weeks ago we looked at Moses. And how he led the people out of Egypt. And then we looked at Joshua. The Lord said to Joshua, Moses, my servant, is dead I will now exalt you to be the leader, the general, the guy who leads the people of Israel across the River Jordan into the promised land. <coughs> so Moses led the Exodus out, but he got as far as the River Jordan, and he died. And the Lord gave the leadership over to Joshua, and he took the people over. And we did that last week. Now this week, Joshua is a senior. He's about to die. And he gathers all the tribes of Israel. All 12 tribes of Israel. Remember, these are tribal people. And he gathers them and he says, come to Shechem. And he gathers, the Bible tells us, the elders. He gathers the heads, he gathers the judges, and he gathers the officers of all the twelve tribes. And he says, now thus says the Lord. Well, next week we will continue with this, what thus says the Lord. But you've noticed all the people we've called are men, males. Next week, we're going to take a different approach to this. We're going to look at a female. We're going to look at a judge because Joshua turned it over to the judges. And one of the judges happens to be Deborah. And uh, hold your seats. Uh, come back next week. And we'll be talking about female leadership from Deborah. But Joshua had completed the exodus that Moses had started. And they drove out all the Canaanites, the Amorites, the Jebusites, the Gergesites, pesticides. All of them were driven right out of the land. And at that stage, Joshua, now an old general, an old man, a leader, a great leader, drew a line in the sand. He had it. This is too much. Some of the people came in and they took up the gods of the Amorites, the people, the tribes who were there before them. 
And he drew a line in the sand and challenged the people to serve the Lord. And today, I'm going to do like Joshua. I'm going to give you a choice. I'm going to give you uh, four choices. It's the same choice. But serving God is a necessary choice. Serving the Lord God is a necessary choice. It's one we must make. Joshua said, choose for yourselves this day, not tomorrow, not next week. Choose for yourselves this day. Now this is General Joshua speaking to the people. Either you serve the God of Israel, or you serve the gods of the Amorites, the demonic gods, the gods of the other people, the gods that have no power. But he says, as for me, I have decided to follow Jesus. And there's a, there's a hymn, I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The cross before me, the world behind me. No turning back, no turning back. So many people, especially young people, want to put off accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Hey, I got time, you know. I, I'll sow my oats now and... Uh, later on, I'll, when I'm old and ready for the church, you know, the church is full of old people, but I'll, I'll come to church. But until then, I will just continue to sow my oats and put off accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. My friends, I don't know if it occurred to any of you, but we may not get old. We may not get old. I don't know, every morning that we come from St. John and we come over here to Antrim, at the side of the road there's a little cross. In fact, there's a fairly large cross. And I'm told that that cross was there because a drunken driver came along and took one of our members out. And so there's a cross at the side of the road. And as we come a little further down, there are two crosses the side of the road and they normally around those crosses the families keep them the grass well mowed. One of the first cross that we passed was a young person, a member of the church, drunk driver took his life. My friends, we might not have the time we think we ought to have. So serving God is a necessary choice. We don't know when our lives are going to be snuffed out. We don't know when Jesus Christ is going to come back, but we do know that He is coming back. He said, I believe. So serving God is a necessary choice. So serving God is also a personal choice. My friends, Joshua was the general of this great Israelite army. But he could not make the people serve God. You see, a person convinced against their will is still unconvinced still. We can do all the preaching in the world, but it's up to each and every individual. We serve a personal God. Now, Jesus Christ came back for the sins of the whole world. He came back to save the whole world. But that is only good if we accept him. He's not going to beat us on the head and say, receive me by faith. He's going to present the facts as Joshua did. Here are the facts. Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world, but He is our personal Savior. There's another uh, hymn which, uh, again, I'm into black hymns this morning. Not my mama, but my mama, father, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of grace. Not my mom and our father, not the preaching of my brother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of grace. It's me, it's me, it's me, O oh Lord. And that goes on. But it's been said that a person must make three 
main decisions. We must make three main decisions for ourselves. One is the choice of a vocation. You've got to decide, I'm going to be a, and you name it, whatever you, do, whatever you are, you must decide for yourself the choice of your vocation. The next thing we must make a choice of is the choice of a mate. Now I'm going to say the choice of a mate is very simple and the people have spoken. If I'm a man, my mate is a female. If someone is a female, her mate is a male. I'm going to state that emphatically. If you're a man, your mate has got to be a female. If you're a female, your mate has got to be a male. So we make the choice of our vocation. I'm going to be a whatever. Then we make the choice of a mate. And a mate is someone of the opposite sex to me. And then we make the choice of religion, our religious faith. Now I know some people say, I don't have any religion. Yes, you do. Everyone has a religion. Now to us, we're Christians. Yeah, to others, they're whatever they are. That's their choice. But everyone makes a choice of a religion. We must make three choices. The choice of vocation, the choice of a mate, and the choice of our religious faith. So serving God is a necessary choice. Serving God is a personal choice. Serving God is an urgent choice. Urgent. We must do it now. Joshua says, choose you this day. <coughs> Tomorrow, choose you this day whom you will serve. My friends, the shortness of life and, the, and we face the shortness of life and we face the certainty of death. Not a hundred years from now, every one of us in here would have come and we would be dead. It's a one, it's a hundred percent thing. No one gets out of this life alive. We all will face death. Life is fleeting, life is uncertain. We've all heard of the drunk driver who just goes across there and wipes out some teenager or just last week, someone, a pilot, and I would love to be a pilot, <laughs> one of those big things at uh, McConnell Air Force Base, uh, huge things, and take him up in the sky. Here's this pilot taking this plane up, engine cut out, crashed in through the building, through the roof, into a building, three people, at the forefront of technology, simulators, and heaven knows what. Their lives are gone. His life is gone. They got up that morning, went to work. They did not know that they were minutes away from eternity. And none of us know that. Life is fleeting. We've all heard, and some of us have even been to funerals of teenagers who decided to end it all. My friends, the choice is urgent. Life passes quickly. The choice to serve God is urgent. So we must be serving God because serving God is a necessary choice. Serving God is, is a personal choice. Serving God is an urgent choice. And finally, serving God is a logical choice. It makes sense. You know, suppose there is no life after death, and suppose I accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and I get there, there's no life after, uh, there's no life after death. Well, I haven't lost anything. But just suppose, as Jesus said, there is life after death. Then it's a logical choice. It's a logical choice. Either the way you look at it. Why not serve the Lord now and be prepared for all of eternity? My friends, Joshua did not urge Israel to choose blindly. No, he gave them the facts. He says, remember all the blessings you received. Remember how the Lord brought you out of Egypt. Remember how the Lord provided for you. The Lord fed you each and every day. Millions 
millions of people picked up manna in the morning and uh, they had quail in the evening, barbecue chops at night. <clears throat> millions of people, their animals went with them, their shoes lasted throughout the entire 40 years, their clothes lasted the entire 40 years. They defeated all of those tribes that they came against. Remember the stuff that the Lord has done for you. And remember that Jesus Christ came. God gave you the greatest blessing of all. God gave you Jesus Christ. And he died on the cross just for you and for me. Why would any man do that? I'm not worthy for him to come and die. But he did. And he did it just for you and he did it just for me. He gave his life for your sins. He bought our place in heaven. And accepting Jesus Christ by faith, he received forgiveness of sin. He removed our guilt, the promise of heaven, and the hope of the abundant life. And he said, I came, and he was giving, going to give his life that we might have a life more abundantly. My friends, why would anyone not want to serve the Lord? As long as we live, the Lord will be there waiting, calling us, come home, come home. Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. In Joshua 24, 15, I'm going to read it. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord... Choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Well, the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. My friends, I encourage you to make life's greatest choice. Serve the Lord. Amen. Please uh, turn with me in uh, books to him 8. Let's do 881. 881. Please stand if you will. You can. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Amen. maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under the conscious father, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy 
thank you for this offering. We thank you for being here. We thank you for blessing us with your offerings and gifts that the Lord has given to you. May this offering be blessed. May it be used to the glory of God here and throughout the world. Amen. Please uh, turn with me in your handouts. I will praise thee.